Today, I'm flying one of the world's most exclusive first-class flights on board Singapore Airlines. There are just six suites upstairs each A380 aircraft, complete with either single or double bed, an electronically movable armchair and closing door. And that's before we get started on the luxury bathroom, complete with a dressing table. Expect top shelf champagne, Ossetria caviar, and of course, the world-renowned Singapore service. Join me on board the flying hotel room and let's see what it's really like together. Oh, and before we begin, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I'm starting today in Germany, so let's head over to the airport and pick up my journey on the ground at 7 a.m. Hello there and welcome back to the channel. You join me today at Frankfurt International Airport where we begin our journey on Singapore Airlines A380. I'm very excited about this given the last time that I was here I was trying out their 777 and now we're going to go up another level to try what is probably regarded as the best first class in the world. Right, so boarding pass is all ready to go and I've just realized that the flight is a little bit delayed, although that's a good thing because it allows more time in the lounge to go and experience. Let's go and see what it is like. A few minutes later. All through security, now it's time to go through passport control and then we can go and relax in the lounge. But got to get this back on. Let's do that before I get into trouble. So I made a joke going through security that the snake in queue was making me dizzy. Unfortunately, my banter was lost on my German brother. Don't need a medic. Yeah, you heard correctly. He was asking for a medic. So lounges, we have two options today. One is the previously visited Lufthansa Senator Lounge. The second is the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge, which apparently is up here. I haven't actually been to this lounge for about five or six years, so I'm interested to see what impact the pandemic has had on this. that is the lounge out of the way hang on a second yeah sorry about that anyway the thing about today of course is the focus is on the aircraft itself they're never going to be able to replicate that sort of level of experience that you'd get at a Singapore Airlines lounge but it did the trick early in the morning of course I'm saving my appetite for on board Right, here we go, gate B46 and I can see the A380 just parked over here Let's go get on board. Being the fact this is the A380, we're gonna be having to go up a level to get on board. The first class cabin is at the very top. Well, it's on the upper deck. It really is crazy how big the A380 is. Of course, up until just two days ago, they were operating the 7 on this route. Right then, just before we get on board, here's a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. This isn't the 1990s where you have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from the domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace are offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to Squarespace squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy and use the coupon code Trek Trendy. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm led down a single aisle to my room by one of the welcoming flight attendants. I'm in one alpha today and my word wow. Where do we even begin here? For perhaps one of the very first times in my life of aviation, I am lost for words. As I attempt to compose myself, I stow my luggage in the suite's wardrobe. As I said, it's a hotel room in the sky. I've just been poured a delicious glass of Dom Perignon. We've got the 2008 vintage on the go today, so with that... FYI, that's a $250 bottle of champagne. 
it's not long before we begin to push back from stand, so I get my seatbelt fastened. The safety video is run on the tiny takeoff only TV, you'll see the much larger one later on. I must say it's a very civilised way to enjoy the safety video while sipping away at your Dom P. As we continue our taxi to the runway, we pass by the daily Toronto bound Air Canada 777. I always feel these are trying to identify as a Dreamliner. And just like that, we're cleared for takeoff. We hurtle down the runway and off into the German morning haze over Frankfurt. Today's flight will take 9 hours, over nearly 4,000 miles, to New York's JFK. And the first thing that I need to work out is that this seat here actually swivels because this is only for takeoff position where I am here. I don't know how to do that yet, so uh, I'm going to have to ask for some help. Thankfully, after some further investigation, I find the correct button and we're on the move. Now, this is really the most James Bond feature of any aircraft. Move over Emirates and your motorised minibar. Of course, it doesn't stop at the TV and finally I'm able to position the seat to awkwardly look out the window. This has to be the first negative though, as the seat never really seems quite in the right position. In terms of other features, the window shades drop up and down at the touch of a button. There's also a tablet which you can use to control various elements of the seat, though I could never get it undocked. Oh, and there's also this neat vanity mirror, though that pales in comparison to what's offered in the bathroom, which you'll see in a second. Not sure about you, but I'm starved. Let's get that tray table out and see what's on offer today. Now strangely, SQ don't provide physical menus. They claim it's to reduce touch points, but this makes zero sense to me and hampers the premium experience. Anyway, what did I go for? Well, first up is the iconic chicken satay and one of my favorite onboard dishes of all time. The chicken is juicy and the peanut satay is rich. It has everything you'd want from an appetizer. After a quick clean of my hands, I'm dismayed to see there's no hot towels back just yet. It's not long before my table is set for my next course. And naturally, it's that time of any luxury flight, the hallmark staple, caviar. I'm served some breads to a company and I'm recommended their garlic bread. It's no Pizza Express, but it's tasty enough. But of course, the highlight, the caviar. To think I never used to like it before reviewing flights, this comes with all the usual suspects, egg whites, creme fraiche and blinis. Needless to say, I easily polish off the 50g glass jar, left wanting more. Now for the main event, the beef cheeks, accompanied by these delicious and fluffy breaded croquettes and broccolini. The beef was beautifully tender, succulent and just melted in the mouth. It's fair to say, whilst it's excellent, the very best catering is reserved for flights departing Singapore's Changi base. Without ordering it, I'm presented with a cheese plate. This was tasty enough, but I feel this could have been more ambitious given we're in first class. This was accompanied by a fruit bowl, which was fresh, zesty and bursting with flavour. Now, many of you will know that I do have quite a sweet tooth. However, I feel that I somehow, my match may have very well been made here for airline staff very kindly decided that they wanted to showcase me the best of their desserts today. Um, I've been told, don't worry if you don't finish it all, uh, part of me sees it as a challenge. And challenge it was. First up, the chocolate ganache with a chocolate sorbet and cookie crumble. Rich, playful and very sweet. The arguably classier option was the coffee and chocolate tort. This was lighter, but still as decadent and as sweet as the previous dessert. With dinner now out of the way, I think it's time to change into something a little more comfortable. I'll grab my PJs out of my wardrobe and head over to the most incredible bathroom I've ever seen on a plane before. bathroom on a crane. I mean, it's literally bigger than a lot of hotel bathrooms. Let me show you around. The centerpiece, of course, the dressing table, something I've never seen on board to date. There's even an amenity drawer, though this wasn't abundantly stocked, unfortunately. Other amenities include Lalique Facial Mist, which aside from making me look ridiculous, is very refreshing. Anyway, before I get too carried away, let me change into, well, some slippers, which we'll change into in just a second. First of all, PJs. So what do you think? 
I think these are very comfortable and frankly needed after that button busting dinner. After a quick freshen up, it's time to head back to my room. In the short time I've been gone, the wonderful SQ staff have made up my bed for me. As you have seen already, there's an entirely separate bed for you to sleep in. I'll just get my clothing hung up in my sweet wardrobe. This is really a pinch me moment. Now let's get the door shut and get settled into bed. This is where the space and privacy really comes into its own. It feels incredibly private and isolated away from other passengers. Coupled with the superbly comfortable bedding, it enticed me into a much needed 40,000 feet afternoon nap. Good night all and catch you all in a moment. Many hours later, I awake somewhere over northern Canada, and you'd never guess it, but it's time for food service again. Let's hope it's a little lighter than my last mammoth meal. I opt for a refreshing DC, and shortly thereafter, the Thai porridge is served. Now, like me, you're probably thinking that doesn't sound good, but I can tell you quite the opposite. It was fantastic. The pork was delicate, the broth was enticing, with a variety of spices and depth of flavour and the rice, it just held it all together. I asked as a special request to have some more of the wonderful satay. The FA was hesitant, they were worried that the chicken wouldn't be at its optimum so late in the flight. I said not to worry, I'd still love it. Thankfully it was served and it was just as incredible as before. I still stand by it, this is one of the very best dishes on board a plane. With our flight plan showing not a huge amount of time left at altitude, I wanted to show you the other suites on board. Four out of the six rooms are occupied, but I have a hunch we can take a quick glance at the double bed. Oh, wait, I've been spotted. <laughs> You'll have to wait for my friend Nonstop Dan's review of the SQ double bed coming soon to his channel. Make sure you head over and subscribe to him if you haven't already. Both row three suites were actually unoccupied on this flight. However, I'd advise against choosing them if you can. They're noticeably smaller and close to the galley. I mean, they'd still be wonderfully luxurious, but I'd try and score row one if you can. Now it's really time to go get changed. Let's head back to the wonderful bathroom and get that NASA hoodie and jeans back on. A quick freshen up later and the Tims placed firmly back on my feet. Let's head back to my room and get ready for landing. Again, I have to swivel my seat back into the forward position and after putting my seatbelt on, I'm back to craning my neck out of the window to watch our descent into JFK Terminal 4. It's a beautiful, fresh and sunny afternoon, so I'm treated to wonderful views on our descent into New York. With that, we taxi to our stand and my A380 Suites experience draws to a close. It's honestly up there as one of the best flights I've ever taken and one I remember for many years to come. It is welcome to New York and of course a, it's, a, well, it's a hello and goodbye because we haven't actually properly said hello on camera hello. yet, have we? <laughs> hello. But it's, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Wish you'd been on board with us. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming along today and catch you all again next week. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you.